Hey guys, and welcome to the Troy Francis podcast. You join me here in London. It's the 20th of October, Tuesday the 20th of October, and I'm coming at you live with another one of these solo broadcasts. So I'm going to run, I think, slightly shorter today than the normal half an hour because I've decided to start recording these things as videos, and I don't necessarily want the video to last for half an hour. So I'm thinking maybe more like 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes or so, maybe a bit longer. Let's see how we get to. But yeah, there it is. So I'm sort of experimenting with the format a little bit because what I want to do is put video content obviously onto to YouTube, which is where I hope many of you are watching this. But I'm also going to continue to put the audio out onto SoundCloud and also out onto iTunes and other podcast providers as well. So... <clears throat> What that basically means is that you get uh, this wonderful audio treat if you're just listening to this on one of the podcast providers. And you get to see my beautiful, handsome face as well if you're watching this on YouTube. So there you go. Either way, you win. It's all good. Cheers. Um, in terms of sort of like parish notices, not an enormous amount this week, but if you're not watching this on YouTube, you're listening to this as audio. And even if you are watching this on YouTube, please do go to my channel and hit subscribe. That is hit the red subscribe button underneath the video that you'll see this playing in. And also hit that notifications bell as well so you get updated when I put out new videos. Because the fact is that really the bulk of my attention this year has been on YouTube, on growing that channel, on doing obviously the frequent live streams, the CAD live streams we're doing on Mondays, Wednesdays. And Fridays at 11.30 a.m. EST, plus putting up videos like this and etc. etc. So the real focus has been on YouTube and the channel's growing really well over there. And thank you for everybody who supported me, getting the views are really up. I'm getting loads of comments, getting loads of likes. So it's all great stuff. But please do, if you haven't already, do subscribe over there because I'm really making that the hub for my content right now. And so when I'm announcing new projects, new things coming up, a lot of that content is going to go onto YouTube first. So do subscribe over there. Thank you very, very much. Uh, really enjoying it as well. I mean, like I'm a writer at heart. My my preferred medium really is, is just to write. But I have to say, sort of getting a little bit more used to the old camera and the, the bright lights of the spotlight. And yeah, it's, it's been a laugh. I'm enjoying it. And hopefully um, adding some value for you guys as well, which is obviously the main thing. This is the purpose of all of it, really. So hit subscribe over there. Also, the other thing to say is get on my free email list. I've got a daily email list, Monday to Friday, absolutely free of charge. All you have to do is supply an email address. The email will go out to that address. And every day I send out a short or sometimes long, but you know, often a short, medium-sized article about some aspects of dating, about dating life, the marketplace, self-development, or just life in general, really, depending on what is going on at the time. <clears throat> I also put news, updates, giveaways, offers, etc. into that sometimes. So you do need to get on that email address. As I say, 100% free. And again, the link is in the description below this broadcast. So do sign up for that. And the other thing to say is that you can still get Renegade Dating Blueprint, which is my collection of 11 books about dating and all of that stuff. Uh, on the link below as well. So do sign up for that. It's a great package, as she said, and it is uh, a ton of value in there for sure. So with all of that being said, what I wanted to touch on today is something that I have talked about before, but I think it, it, it never, you know, th there's never any harm in restating this really, because I think it is an ongoing issue that we suffer from in the West, um, and no doubt all over the world really. And that is the guys, if you want to be successful in dating, if you want to have a prolific dating life, or even if you just want to find a nice, high-quality um, girl to have a long-term relationship with and settle down, either way, you know, you need to be bold, you need to be audacious, and you need to stand out from the crowd. That's the fundamental thing here. It's standing out from the crowd. And the reason that this is such a, I think, such a big issue these days is because we live in this globalized society whereby I'm in London at the moment. If I travel to Berlin, which I probably will soon because I've got to do some stuff over there, 
I'm going to see a lot of the same stores. I'm going to see the H and M. I'm going to see the Zara. Uh, I'm going to see the Body Shop. I'm going to see the Apple Store, uh, McDonald's, Starbucks, etc., etc., etc. So there's there's this sort of homogenization of culture that's happening globally, and that's just in Europe. But if I travel to America, I'm going to see the same sorts of things. If I travel to uh, to, to even to Eastern Europe and Russia, I'm going to see those similar brands and even into Asia and, and so on and so forth. So because these gra- these brands are globalized and we all know that and that's one thing, but I- increasingly it seems to me that the culture is also becoming globalized. You know, we're all listening to pretty much the same music. We're watching the same shows on Netflix or whatever. We're seeing the same movies. Not that there's many movies out at the moment, but, you know, we're seeing the same ones when they do come out. And I, I suppose you could say that the uh, what's happened this year in terms of lockdowns and restrictions are, are, are also a signal of this growing sense of globalization where we're all kind of living under the same culture, albeit in different countries. Now, I'm not making any big political point here about globalization. I think in many ways it's been a good thing. And it's certainly um, been a good thing from the point of view of the, the the person who wants to have a free life, who wants to travel, who wants to experience different countries and so on and so forth. Um, but I, I would say one aspect of it is this thing that there's been this homogenization of cultures and, and therefore of people. And what that means, it seems to me, is that the kind of average normie dude who's sitting in his one bedroom apartment in Birmingham is in the end, apart from language and cult and sort of dialects and so on, very similar to the average normie dude who's sitting in his bedroom in Stockholm or in Poland somewhere or wherever it is, right? You know, we're all becoming a little bit samey because we've all got these same influences. We've all got these same inputs coming into our lives, okay? And why is that a problem? Well, for me, as an individualist, I bristle at that anyway, right? Because it seems to me a terrible shame that we are all culturally becoming more and more alike rather than not because my whole ethos you know the whole my whole philosophy in life really has been to to stand out against that do you know what i mean to, to stand out against just being another also ran dude just being somebody else you know another one of the herd you want to find ways in which to be different you want to find ways in which you can stamp your own individuality on the world around you it just in general right so i would instinctively bristle as i say at this sort of normification if you like that we're seeing in the culture but in dating i would argue that it is increasingly disadvantageous for you just to be another regular joe okay and why is that well as we've said before the modern dating marketplace is increasingly complex and it's increasingly competitive because of the influence of social media and the dating apps and the connectivity in general that's offered by the internet. And I mean, look, let's let's face it, right? I mean, you might not like Instagram, like Tinder, you might not like Bumble or Hinge, but they're not going anywhere. (laughs) They're not going anywhere anytime soon. And in fact, the likelihood is only that they will grow, is, uh, and, and not just those platforms, but I mean, just in general, the extreme likelihood is that what are we going to see in the next five, 10 years time? There's going to be more platforms, there's going to be more connectivity, there's going to be even more granular um, data mining and, and data targeting, connectivity between nations, is, is only going to increase exponentially. So none of this is going back into the bottle. The genie is not is not going to, you know, suddenly arrive and say, listen, guys, it's been a great ride, but I'm going to go back in that little bottle now. So thanks very much. It's, it's, it's just not going to happen. OK, so. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the, whatever sense of competition that you are feeling now in terms of dating and however tricky and challenging you feel that things are now, I can assure you, and I don't mean to be the bearer of, you know, doom-laden tidings here, because it's not all bad, but I assure you that it's only going to increase. It's not going to go back the other way. And this is why all of these trad kind of guys are so irritating and misguided, because the truth of the matter is that we are not going to see a resurgence of traditional values in any big 
way. We're not going to see a turning back of the clock. We're not going to see us going back to some imaginary society looking like how things were maybe in the 1950s or whatever you want to imagine in your fevered imagination. So, um, yeah, you know, we have technology. It's connected us in ways that we could never have imagined when we were kids, if you're my age. And that's just how it is. And it's just going to continue down that route, okay? So, with all of that being said, what competitive edge do you have in that marketplace? Well, there are a number of competitive edges that you might have. You might be incredibly good looking like I am. And then you can be a dating coach and scam these poor, poor men, poor lonely men out of their money. I'm only joking. Um, but you might be incredibly good looking. And that is a competitive advantage because, yes, looks do matter. You might have great cheekbones. You might be tall. You might be really muscled and jacked. You might be really rich. Yes, money makes a difference. You might have status in some way. Maybe you're famous, right? All of these things give you standout. All of these things give you a, a certain competitive advantage within the marketplace. But that said, none of them are, are the definitive knockout blow. Because yes, you might be good looking, but so what, right? There's, there's millions of good looking guys in the world. You might be tall, but there's probably guys who are taller than you. And, you know, like there are plenty of tall guys in the world. You might be rich, but there are also a bunch of other rich dudes around as well. So any any of these things that you have, yes, they're good, I'm, and nobody's arguing that. You know, if you and if you can acquire them, then acquire them. I mean, I'm not really on board with looks maxing, but at the same time, you know, I I do think if there is if there are things that you can improve about the, your appearance and the way you come across to other people physically, then then do it for sure. Why not, right? Uh, the most simple of those, as people always bang on about ad infinitum, is that you go to the gym. Because if you go to the gym, then you're likely to, if you're doing it right, you're likely to stay lean. And staying lean really, to me, is the key thing here. I don't believe that dating success is predicated on being jacked. I don't believe that you have to be some man mountain, some steroid laden kind of um, piece of beefcake in order to get dating success. I think actually, I mean, and guys tend to think that, but that's not necessarily the truth. I think the truth is in many cases, and John MLD has been talking about this a lot recently, talking about the K-pop phenomenon and um, some of the actors that they get to play superheroes. Actually, leanness is a, a, a really central pillar of masculine good looks, okay? And perhaps the ultimate example of that would be Tyler Durden in Fight Club that sort of physique if you can get that and that takes work as well but if you can get that or something nearer to that then facially the you're going to be better looking because in general uh, well not even in general I think it's pretty much a, a undisputable fact that when you are leaner you're facially going to going to look better and this counts for both men and women so yeah I mean the the, the obvious thing that you can do to improve your appearance is to work out and yes you should be doing that i don't bang on about lifting and stuff on this channel because i'm not a as you can see i'm not a world expert in it but i certainly go to the gym um four or five times a week and i do that and i do cardio and stuff as well and i have done for many many years and i really like it because largely because of the psychological benefits actually that it gives me rather than the necessary the physical but the physical counts as well and remember lads you know, I'm in my 40s now, so, you know, I'm trying to keep him reasonably good nick, and I think I'm doing an okay job of it. So, so yeah, you know, you want to work with what you've been given, for sure. I, as I say, I'm, I'm not going to go into any sort of looks max type thing of going and getting plastic surgery. I mean, obviously, that's if that's what you want to do, look into that at your own risk and take the appropriate advice. But certainly, yeah, I mean, make yourself look as good as you can. Work on your career work on your business whatever it is you're doing to try to make more money or at least enough money to live in a comfortable way i think that's important i think style is is, is important you know there are all of these different things sure you can work on because you and, and status and influence and things yeah if you can level up in any of these things then that's great but fundamentally what you really need is some sort of an x factor okay because 
as I say, when you think about the girl who is inundated with opportunities, who's inundated with prospects from all over the world, who can kind of meet any guy, as I say, she's gonna, she's gonna, there are gonna be good looking guys that she can meet. So you're good looking, well, so what? I was talking to James Tusk about this the other day. He was saying, yeah, I'm a reasonably good looking guy, but imagine if I'm sitting there on a film set and there are all these like supermodels there. Are they going to go for me just because I'm reasonably good looking? No, of course they're not. They're going to go for somebody else there who's probably got more status or more, you know, whatever it is. So you want to be developing yourself on as many um, levels as you possibly can, for sure. But you also need to bear in mind that raw visceral attraction is not ignited merely by self-improvement. Self-improvement is great, and it's something that you should be doing largely for yourself in order to have a better life. And because you want to have a balanced life. You know, this isn't all about dating. This isn't just about, you know, um, that's that side of things. That's an important side, but it's not the only side. So, yeah, you want to be doing the self-improvement, but that in itself is not going to get you to the pinnacle. And I think what a lot of guys miss is this sense of audaciousness, is this 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 ability to be radically yourself in social situations or in front of somebody who is very attractive to you, okay? And here's the thing, right? A lot of guys, we've all done this, will fold, in a sense, in front of the attractive woman, in front of the, um, the, the girl that they are interested in. They will sort of seek to almost rein in their personality because they will feel like, if I'm too much like I normally am, like say you're a little bit wacky or you're a little bit, joke, you know, you joke around a lot or you goof around, whatever. And you're like, if I if I just let that rip, if I just give free reign to that, then maybe she's going to think I'm silly. Maybe she's not going to like me. And then, and so they sort of try to, to, to limit their personality. They try to, to hold back. And that's a really bad thing to do. Because, well, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because I, really, you should be going through life living as yourself. Now, I know that it's such a cliche to talk about, yeah, bro, just be yourself. And we all know that doesn't work. Fine. You, you've got to be your, your best self and you've got to learn ways in which to communicate your best self most effectively to those that you are attracted to. And that, by the way, is something that we teach in CAD Academy in detail. So you, you need to look at the, the marketing mechanism, if you like. That's really important. And that's ultimately what dating skills are. It's how you market yourself to the people that you meet when you're out and about socially. Um, but on top of that, there needs to be, you need to be able to create spark with people that you're meeting. That is to say, you need to be somebody who just stands out, somebody who isn't just another run of the mill kind of bro who they've met a hundred times before. And how do you do that? Well, you do that by being radically yourself. And again, this is something we go into in more detail in Cat Academy. But I, I th it's 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 something that you have to really look deeply inside of yourself in order to find out, you know, who you are and what you want to communicate uh, to to people, to the people that you meet. And then you need to find the strength and the courage to just go out there and be that person unapologetically, right? And what will happen as a result of that? Like if I go out wearing this outfit, for example, so I've got this silk scarf on, I've got the blazer, I've got the little pocket square, wearing a t-shirt, whatever, I've got some white jeans on underneath with rips. If I go out wearing this outfit, right, right now, <laughs> I've got the, the bracelets. Um, <laughs> some people, and perhaps you watching now, are gonna think, what an idiot. Why is he wearing that? He looks terrible. That's that's ridiculous. Other people are going to think, that's pretty cool. I kind of like the way he's put that. I like that. I kind of like that silk scarf. I like the way he's put that together. And I've worn some fairly over-the-top things over the years. And sometimes, you know, you, you, you get people who think you're actually quite quite brave in a way to, to, to wear that. I remember wearing a fake fur coat once to a pub in, a really rough pub in Salford, which is a really, um, well, was a very kind of rough part of Manchester back in the day and you know <laughs> um I got some criticism from the locals there but people also said to me wow you're, you know you're really brave just just being able to show your personality like that now you're going to repel some people for sure but you're also going to draw people to you and the people that you draw to you are going to like you even more than they would have done anyway if you know what I mean now I'm 
in giving that example, I'm just talking about clothes, and I'm I I, I want to make it very clear that this isn't just about what you wear. Yes, what you wear is is one element of it, okay? But it's also everything else. It's like what you talk about, the subjects you choose to talk about, the manner in which you choose to talk about them, um, how you come across in terms of your charisma, how you, do you dominate the room or not? Are you able to command attention? Do you back down if you start talking about something and then somebody else says you're wrong or they, says they, they, they say they don't like what you're talking about or are you able to hold frame and really underlying all of this is frame it's it's your ability to hold frame as yourself in social situations and what we really often see is that guys and women but talking predominantly to guys here tend to allow their frame to be crushed by society or by the people around them okay we allow our frames to be to be squeezed and people will seek to exploit this the whole time it's not that they're doing it on purpose necessarily it's not they're being i i think i'll go and i think i'll go and crush his frame um but it, it, it's just like people are always testing you you know women are always testing you but other guys are always testing you as well everyone is trying to see if you really are what you say you are if you really are made of what you you're purporting to be made of and they'll poke you you know and they'll try to get you to drop frame and many of us just end up collapsing our frame because it feels like the easy way out and momentarily perhaps it is perhaps in the short term in that social situation dropping that frame you know being someone who's not quite who you actually are out of politeness or whatever is the easier option but in dating terms that's not very attractive right it's at best it's a neutral but really you're missing out on opportunities because you are not demonstrating the full range of your personality you're not showing that you're somebody who's unafraid okay and think about it courage boldness audacity these things are attractive what's not attractive is being a simp who's carrying in the corner pretending to be somebody that he isn't in order to gain the notional affection of the people around him which is never forthcoming anyway so yeah i mean you, you've got to go out there and be yourself in a, a calibrated way i'm not saying go and be an idiot and smash things up um but yeah you need to you know you need to get used to this and you need to start being more free and start caring less about what you think people will think and accepting that some people are not going to like your vibe you know, not everyone's going to, not everyone likes my vibe. That's fine. I don't really, you know, it's, it's no big problem. It's just the way that it is. But other people really buy into you. And the more polarizing you are, the better. Because you want people really to, to be like, oh my God, what's that guy doing? Why is he wearing that? And then other people to be like, hmm, that, no, that's really cool. I really like that. That's kind of the effect that you want to have. Because as I say, then the people who are drawn to you and the people that you do end up dating are going to really like you as opposed to, not liking you. But I think in conclusion, what I just want to make clear is that in today's globalized, homogenized dating scene, standout is a disappearing commodity. And it's one that will pay dividends if you can acquire it for yourself. And as I say, that's really what I teach a lot on my YouTube channel and in Cat Academy and, and so on and so forth. Because I think I, that for me, the um you know the six that my journey if you like from being somebody who was effectively black pill very negative hated himself very low self-esteem virgin got cheated on countless times so on and so forth my journey from that to where i came to was also a journey of self-revelation was also a journey of saying to the world do you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to be myself and people can either love it or they or they don't have to. And that's fine. And that approach, that mindset shift paid me huge, huge dividends, more than any improvement in looks or physique or money or status or any of this other stuff that people go on about. Turn the dial. The, what really turned the dial was that mind sh shift sense of I'm just going to I'm just going to go out there and to hell with all of them I'm going to be me as I want to be me. And that my friends is the mindset shift that I want to inculcate in you through this content, through this podcast, through the YouTube channel, through the books, through Cat Academy and through everything else. So 
I hope that you will continue to join me for the ride. Thanks very much for tuning in today. Hope you like this podcast. Bit of a shorter one, experimenting with this new shorter formula. So let me know what you think. Uh, Go over to YouTube if you're not there already. Hit subscribe. Hit the notifications bell. Leave me a like. Leave me a comment. It all helps to bump me up the algorithm so I can keep putting out this wonderful free content. Get on the free daily email list below. Support me on Patreon and buy the books. And that is it for today. We'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.